Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the mindfulness session for the MHPN All Together Better Conference. I hope you've been enjoying the conference so far. Um, my name is Kim Xiao. For those of you who had not attended the previous mindfulness sessions before, um, I just want to first give you a little heads up that if by any chance my internet fails me, which can happen sometimes, do bear with me. Um, but I don't think it will happen, fingers crossed. Um, I think, you know, it should just go smoothly and hopefully you'll have a, a pleasant, mindful experience today with me. I do want to first acknowledge that I'm delivering this session from the land of the Ghana people um, in Adelaide and that I recognize the importance of their connection to land, water, culture and community and that I respect the elders past, present and emerging. Now, I also, for those who are, haven't attended the meditation or mindfulness session in the conference before, just to give you a, a picture of what the format is like for this session, I will talk for about 10 minutes about what mindfulness is. Most of you would be very aware of what it is already and may have also got a regular practice, but I still think it's worthwhile to just get us all on the same page. I would also then go into busting some myths about mindfulness, um, especially for those of you who don't think you can do it, that you do it well, etc. And then I also want to share some benefits um, in terms of the research to date about mindfulness. And then after that, I will take you through a mindfulness uh, practice. Now, I want to make sure that everyone here stays safe. So if at any point in time you do feel any strong emotions um, coming up for you during the guided mindfulness practice, um, just resource yourself. So what that means is if you have your eyes closed, open them, look around you, um, listen out for sounds, so, you know, get in touch with your senses. And if you need to, you know, take a break, stand up, walk around, go and get yourself a, a glass of water. So the, the main thing is that you want to feel um, that you are okay and safe. I wouldn't like to think that the guided meditation I'm planning to guide you through would give rise to any um, difficult emotions because ideally I've planned it so that you leave here feeling more centered, more spacious and possibly even more uplifted. Okay, so what is mindfulness? I am reusing John Kabat-Zinn's uh, definition, which is that it is awareness cultivated by paying attention in a sustained and particular way, on purpose and in the present moment and non-judgmental. So really in simple terms, paying to attention to what's right here, right now, not judging whether it's good or bad. Sounds pretty simple, right? But the reality is that it's actually quite difficult to practice because our mind has been conditioned from the day we're born to think and we then have this tendency or at least our mind has this tendency to either be thinking about the past, you know, the stories that's happened and the... Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's my dog. Okay. So yeah, our mind has this... Um, tendency to to go into the past or worrying about the future and um, but so what we need is really to give it an anchor to stay present how do we do that well we can use the breath as an anchor because it's readily available it's accessible um, for us here and um, we can also use our five senses our sight sound hearing smell taste touch the, 
when you think about that though, then it means that really anything we do during our day can be a mindfulness practice. When you're drinking your cup of tea, you could sense the heat of the the warmth of the tea you know, on your in your cup. You can look at it, you can then smell whether it's tea or coffee, letting the taste um be in your mouth and then letting the, the tea or coffee go down your body and feeling the warmth and um, when you're showering sensing the water on your back and when you're walking really noticing how your legs move really noticing how you feel in your body and of course there's other parts of our body can we that we can use to anchor us right the the beating of our heart um, and we can also do mindful movement, whether it's yoga, tai chi, even in your, when you go to the gym. And the key thing I think here, one of the, the myths is that people think that when they try and be mindful, the mind wanders and therefore they fail. But the reality is that when our mind wanders, that's actually very normal. I... Um, trained to become a meditation teacher with one of the world's most renowned meditation teacher, Jack Confield, and he still talks about um, the fact that his mind wanders during meditation. And really, the other thing to remember is that doing practicing mindfulness is not about getting rid of thoughts or emotions, and it's not really about relaxing yes eventually when we become calmer and more relaxed that is the the fruit of the labor but it's not really something that we can force to happen so using John Kabat-Zinn's words what he said is that we need to embrace these seven attitudes when we practice mindfulness and that is that we um we put on that beginner's mind so we become curious. If we are using our breath as our anchor, we can become curious of our breath because each breath is a new breath. Each breath is a fresh breath. So how can we how can we take on that curious stance and and you know and explore our breath? We also, when we're practicing mindfulness, we want to um, be non-judgmental. So whatever that arises for us. We just allow it to happen. We accept it. We let it be. And we be patient with ourselves. We're not striving. As I say, we're not trying to get anywhere. We're just here in this present moment, being really intimate with what's happening right here, right now. So the evidence of the benefits. I was really surprised to discover the other day that there are now 17,000 publications showing the positive effects of mindfulness. It ranges from improving our general well-being to making us feel younger again you know, and lowering depression, anxiety, helps us deal with our pain, makes us less stressed. And generally, I think it's because we have better self-regulation because what we're learning a skill really that helps us to ground and center ourselves. And when we're able to do that, we are activating our parasympathetic nervous system. We're coming down the part of our mind that is, um, you know, go into fight, flight or freeze when there are uncertainties or, or threats, the amygdala. And this, once the amygdala gets to calm down, it activates our prefrontal cortex. It means that that part of our brain that is important for um, our executive functioning, making decisions, having relationships, regulating our emotions, are able to then start working. In terms of being someone in the mental health profession, you might be delighted to know that it actually helps when we regularly practice mindfulness. It helps us with our therapeutic presence. We are better at attuning to what's going on inside while we're listening to our clients' challenges. We gain a better perspective of suffering of our clients, which then helps us cultivate our compassion and empathy for our clients. And of course, all that goes to 
strengthening our therapeutic alliance with our clients. And it's really interesting for me to know that there are actually research out there now that shows that um, mental health professionals who are meditators are getting better results, better improvements of their patients, showing symptoms reduction and rate of change. So I also want to talk a little bit about what's the difference between meditation and uh, mindfulness. So meditation really is just a formal uh, form of mindfulness. So a formal form of training the mind to, to increase our awareness, but also improve our concentration. So both work side by side, right? And there are many, many different forms of meditation. Uh, mindfulness meditation, which um, is something we will do in a minute. And I'll also actually guide you through a loving kindness uh, meditation. But you can also um, practice mantra visualization as a form of meditation. Ultimately, the aim of meditation or mindfulness is really to free us because it allows us to see our conditioned mind, allows us to see our patterns of thinking, our patterns of behavior. You know, we gain insights into those because, and once once we get insights into those, it means that we can change if we don't like it, right? And ultimately, too, it really helps us to cultivate acceptance and openness to to uncertainties to things that constantly change and and improves our self-awareness and what this really means is that it actually increases our window of tolerance there is a meditation teacher who actually said this he said well when we put a table of spoon a tablespoon of salt into a cup of water that water is undrinkable because it's so salty but if we put a tablespoon of salt into a pond, we can certainly drink it. We might taste a little bit of that salt still, but we can drink it. And this is what mindfulness and meditation does for us. It expands our mind so that we can hold more. We are more tolerant of challenges, uncertainties, because we've got that spacious awareness to hold it all. We've got that emotional re regulation to be able to do it. I like what my teacher said. He says, we all have within us unlimited capacities for extraordinary love, for joy, for communion with life, and for unshakable freedom. And the unshakable freedom to me is this capacity to stay equanimous if you were in the session this morning i talked a little bit about that meaning to be balanced and peaceful in the midst of difficulties because we can self-regulate we have we can make choices in terms of how we want to respond to situation to challenging situations rather than just being reactive okay so Today, this afternoon, I want to take you through a loving-kindness meditation. And the reason I decided on that is because today's topic has been, you know, rather heavy. We've been talking about family violence and, and social isolation and, and loneliness. And I sense that there will be people in your life that you want to wish for them to be well, for them to be happy, especially maybe clients you work with. So I thought loving kindness meditation is 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 uh, fitting. If you find that it's rather mechanical, that's okay. Just go through the motion. Think about this as this opportunity to sit and be present. And um, I also would like you to you know consider shifting your perspective about loving kindness meditation as something that is you know all we're really doing is instead of writing a card to ourselves or to someone else to wish them well, we're just saying it quietly and feeling it in our being, our heart. And there are actually lots of scientific evidence too that shows that it's really effective for helping with anxiety, social connections etc 
So I invite you now to take a moment to sit back in a way that you're comfortable. And then if you're comfortable, close your eyes. If you're not, then bring your gaze down towards the floor. And then just take some really slow and long deep breath. And then making the exhale even longer. And with each exhale, imagine or feel that whatever tension you're feeling in your body is being relaxed, released down to the ground, washed away by the exhale. And you might want to also just check in with your body. So perhaps start by noticing if you're frowning, maybe a little smile on your face will iron out the frowning. Relax your jaw, placing your tongue at the top of your mouth. Slight tuck of the chin helps to release any tension in the neck. Rolling your shoulders back. Relaxes your shoulders. Allow your arms to be loose by your sides. Also noticing how your knees are placed. Maybe sensing the ground supporting you. And I also invite you to quietly set an intention that for the next 15 minutes, you are giving yourself permission to just be here as a form of self-care, and that you're putting aside all your concerns, your worries, your responsibilities. And now just breathe naturally, but use your breath as an anchor. So with your beginner's mind, what are you noticing about your breath? This one, and then the next, and then the next. Maybe you're noticing that the in-breath is slightly cooler than the out-breath. You might notice the breath at the back of your throat. All the rise and fall of your belly. Allow a sense of calm and ease to grow. Mind wandering is, of course, very natural. As soon as you become aware that your mind had wandered off, that moment of awareness is mindfulness. And so with loving kindness, you guide your attention back to whatever anchor you're using, whether it's the breath, whether it's sounds around you, maybe sensations in your body. I invite you now to bring awareness to your heart space. 
and breathe into that space, allowing the heart space to be relaxed and open. Now I invite you to bring to mind someone who is easy to love, easy to be friendly with. Might be your best friend, your partner, maybe your cat or your dog. And as I say these words, feel them in your heart as you giving that wish of these phrases to them. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be safe from inner and outer dangers. May you be well in body and mind. May you be content, happy, and at ease. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be safe from inner and outer dangers. May you be well in body and mind. May you be content, happy, and at ease. Now, I invite you to bring to mind yourself, might be your younger self, or yourself sitting here. And I'm going to say these phrases again, but this time using I. And really, all you are doing is wishing yourself well. So do your best to feel it for yourself. Or you could imagine your best friend or the person or being that you have been just saying the well wishes for saying these phrases back to you. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be safe from inner and outer dangers. May I be well in body and mind. May I be content, happy and at ease. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be safe from inner and outer dangers. May I be well in body and mind. May I be content, happy and at ease. And now I invite you to bring to mind people in your community. And it could be the community here, the MHBN 
community who are all here doing this meditation. And as I say these wishes, know that you are getting these wishes back for yourself. So visualizing this very large supportive community in your mind. We wish each other, may you be filled with loving kindness. May you be safe from inner and outer dangers. May you be well in body and mind. May you be content happy and at ease. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be safe from inner and outer dangers. May you be well in body and mind. May you be at ease, content and happy. We now sit in silence for a couple of minutes as you bathe yourself in these loving wishes, in this positivity, in stillness, calm and peace. I invite you to acknowledge the sense of spaciousness, calmness, perhaps ease and contentment that you're feeling right now. As I close the meditation with the sound of three bells. Thank you, everybody. I hope that was a pleasant experience for you. And I just want to say one thing or two things. One thing is that it is my hope that we will all one day treat mindfulness practices as brushing, like, like we treat brushing our teeth. We don't think twice about brushing our teeth. We don't um and ah and consider whether we have time or not, whether we feel like it or not. We just do it because it's just part and parcel of what we do every day. I hope after hearing about the benefits of mindfulness, you will treat mindfulness the same way. And you can start by just doing a couple of minutes a day, allowing yourself to sit and be with your breath, to sit in silence. And I think this poem that you see on screen is... It's really something that is worth um, kind of remembering. Little by little, I'll learn to know the treasured wisdom of long ago. And one of these days, perhaps we'll see that the world will be the better for me. And do you not think 
that this simple plan made him or her a wise and useful man or lady. And the only other thing I wanted to offer is that I do、um, offer a free online meditation on Wednesday as a midweek reset. If you want, I'm very happy to share the Zoom link with you. And you can also visit my website,、um, chitterleaf dot com, for other talks and and blogs. I hope you have. A lovely evening, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much, everyone.